Ralph, you, um, ever since you entered into a relationship with Apple, starting with the iPhone in 2007, there's, there's been a big spotlight shown on your company. Um, there's a lot of attention, and not all of it has been positive. There's uh, complaints about network quality, capacity of the network, class action lawsuit, um, iPad user information that's been hacked. And there's no question that your competitors do not get the same kind of attention as AT&T does for, for a variety of issues. So I guess the question is, do you view the relationship with Apple as a net positive, or is Apple sort of like the hot date that turned out to be kind of crazy? No, I think it's been a net positive. I think if you look back, uh, not only at the decision to have the iPhone, uh, but you look at the bigger picture of the decisions that we have made uh, to be able to be a player in the mobile broadband business, it's been a huge positive. And this actually began way back, in, as you know, in the days when we merged Singular Wireless and AT&T Wireless, when we made the bet to be the first in the world to commercially deploy uh, in a large-scale HSPA, which at the time was nowhere around the world. We were the first ones to deploy it, and it was that capability that allowed devices like the iPhones and other phones to play a part in the mobile broadband ecosystem that we see today. Do you think deploying HSDPA at the time you did was something that um, played into Apple's decision? To uh, absolutely, to because I think if you look at that device, that's not a device that's going to be optimized by running on a 2G network. And so I think us making the bet uh, that at the same time we were integrating two very large companies, we were going to overlay them with a technology that nobody had ever deployed, uh, was a huge win. And that, that technology is what allows us today uh, to say that AT&T has the fastest mobile broadband network in the country, a network, by the way, that carries. This is an unbelievable amount. We carry, by our estimates, about half of the mobile data traffic in this country on our network today. So when you add the speed, the traffic capacity, and you complement that with Wi-Fi, we were also one of the first ones to embrace Wi-Fi and actually bought Wayport and made Wi-Fi part of our network infrastructure because we felt so strongly about the forthcoming wave of mobile broadband and data that we were seeing. So it's, it's part of a bigger picture, but I think it's been a huge and a net positive for our company. What is the big misconception or one big misconception out there about AT&T's relationship with Apple? You know, we have a great relationship with Apple. We have it at every level, from CEO all the way down. And uh, it, it's something that we believe in strongly. Not only do we have a strong relationship with companies like Apple, but we've had strong relationships with companies like IBM, as we go to market with them, with companies like RIM, with Amazon, with Starbucks. We, we think it's good to bring the best in a partner and join with that partner in taking products to market. So that's been part of what we've been all about for many, many years now. When does the exclusivity on the iPhone expire? Yeah, we have a confidentiality agreement that doesn't allow me to discuss that, uh, so I, I can't comment on that. Well, let me ask the question a, a slightly different way then. Um, what will a post-exclusivity smartphone world look like for right. AT&T and your competitors? You know, the, it's going to yeah, happen. No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great question. Not, if you had asked me that question five years ago, I would say the question would have been, what's going to happen when you lose the exclusivity on the Razer, Ralph? Because five years ago, we led the, the revolution of that small device. It was an exclusive device. It was hugely popular, and we've seen the same thing happen with the iPhone. What's going to happen is the same thing that we've always been about. It's making sure that to our customers base, we, we bring the best and the coolest devices to market, and we give the customers great choices. And that's what we do today with the iPhone and the other uh, portfolios. And, and we think that giving the customers that portfolio and that capability is what is bringing about this huge mobile broadband demand. That is what is going to fuel our growth, our revenue growth, and, and the things that we see in the future for AT&T.